and the credit card company would say, oh, Phil Sy, you're just such a nice person, and uh, you've got a birthday coming up, so we'll just forgive you that $5,000. That would be a nice thing, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the, the, the other reality is I also have a, a, a home mortgage, you know, of $500,000. I've still got this house down there in San Diego, you know, who yeah. is going to take care of that? Even though my, 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 my debt is forgiven on my credit card, the reality is uh, I, I still have this house with this huge debt. Well, it would be like somebody else stepping down and saying, okay, here's what I'll do. I'll also pay for your house, and now you can live in that for free. Well, that's the righteousness. The forgiveness, okay, takes care of all the things that I've done wrong. The righteousness now is the power now to give me the strength for the future. And so not only does Jesus forgive me, but he gives me his righteousness so that now I can reign in life. I can, I can live the life that he wants me to live. I don't just get forgiven. I receive now the power of his righteousness. And as, as I begin to understand that, uh, the, reading the Bible takes on a new, a whole new meaning for me. Let me give you an example. There's a verse in James, and that's not one of the verses we're looking at today, but it's just an example of how this changes things. James uh, chapter 5. And it's uh, verse 16, where it says that we should pray for each other and that, that people will be healed when we pray. But then it says this, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And normally you read that and you oh, my prayers aren't going to be any good then, because here it says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And I think, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm a nice person, I'm a Christian, but I'm not a righteous person. Yes, I am. I have become, the Bible says, the righteousness of God in Christ. So I am a righteous person. Not because I do right things all the time, but because Jesus is my righteousness and he lives in me. So from now on, whenever I read something in the Bible that says something about the righteous, I can say, yes, I'm part of that group. And before that, I would read that and I'd think, oh, I can't do this. I can't pray for people because this is the prayer of a righteous person. It's powerful and effective. I'm not righteous. Yes, I am. In Christ, I have received his righteousness. And when you read the Proverbs and the Psalms, full of wonderful verses that say things like this. God will not forsake the righteous. Uh, God will bless the righteous. And if you didn't understand this, you would read those verses and you'd think, oh, that doesn't apply to me because I, I don't do everything right. I make a lot of mistakes. Well, the good news is Christ is my righteousness. And I have become, it says, the righteousness of God in Christ. I receive the gift of righteousness. So now when I read these verses, I can say, yes, I am part of that group. Those are my people, the righteous, because of what Jesus has done for me. So I want to encourage you to receive the gift. If you haven't done it already, receive the gift. It says receive the gift of righteousness and reign through life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that not only did you die to forgive us our sins, but you died to give us your righteousness. We thank you, Lord, that we don't stand in our righteousness. We stand in yours. I thank you, Father, that you accept the perfect, right life of Jesus in exchange for our life. And I pray that more and more, Lord, we would believe your word that says that we have become the righteousness of God through Christ. In Jesus' name we ask this. Thank you. 